everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. I'm really excited for today's episode. I was recently introduced to the work of Frank Andre from Berlin. Um, he's an impressionistic street photographer and his images are just stunning. He uses both shooting techniques as well as post-processing to create these very impressionistic images. I will link in the description of the video the link to his website as well as his YouTube channel where he showcases his imagery. He doesn't really talk about it or give necessarily editing tips, which I wish he would, um, but you can get an idea for his work beyond what is here on his website. So the subscriber asked me to see if I could emulate his techniques and that's what we're going to dive into today. So let's jump in and get started. I was given this challenge to really look at Frank Andre's work and try to figure out how he edits these images. I really started studying the images. And what I noticed is um, some blur, very strategic blur. So you can notice this horse is still in focus this kind of part of the carousel, some of the words, but the people are very blurred. There's um, a sense of movement, a sense of lighting, and there's just lots of texture and blurring. And you can see that pretty consistently through his imagery. A lot of things blurred, but also a lot of texture. And as I went through and continued to look, a lot of the texture appears to be the same technique. So I envision that it's either a texture applied over the entire image within blend modes and masking, or it's an actual brush. So I have tried both, and I'll talk you through when we jump into Photoshop what has worked for me. So to get this type of um, textured, brushed look, impressionistic look, you could use a Photoshop brush where you are applying it, um, or you could also use a texture that you overlay as an additional image. So there's two kind of ways you could do that, and a brush is gonna allow you to selectively apply, so that could be one method. There's also the blur techniques that you can do in Photoshop. Now this to me definitely looks like the use of a brush. You can see kind of the movement. This one is very, um, impressionistic and almost abstract. This one almost looks like um, a little bit, it, it, it has a little bit of maybe um, kind of a multiple exposure look. Um, and definitely you can see some of this, still some of this texture that is consistent in some of the imagery. So this is another example. If you look here, these lines and texture are very similar to what's on this wall. So again, it could be a brush, it could be a texture overlay, but the consistencies in his images are the dark shadows, the bright whites, where he leads your eye through the image, and the um, blurring of most of the people in the image. But other parts of the image, um, the details are still present. You can see the nice blur, but you still know exactly what it is. Again, that very similar texture being applied. This image I just love, you know, the intentionality of the focus of the child, the mother, and then the blur of the rest of the scene. And again, that consistent texture um, or brush technique being applied. Now this one is more just a straight Street, it does have some of that, what looks to be maybe a brush technique being applied. There are impressionistic brushes that look similar to that. And some of that brushing around the light, very selective use. This one is much heavier. So again, um, whether it's that same texture or the same brush, it's very, very similar. And again, the shadows, the whites, the blurring of the people. This has, of course, a much heavier look. And this one is very consistent with the others with that brush stroke um, and look to it. This absolutely looks like a brush technique um, being added here. Looks like kind of wispy brushes. 
So I would expect, and I could be totally wrong, that he could be using a combination again of a texture overlay or brushes. Now there's other steps obviously that are being taken, whether it is shooting this these imagery um, images with a lens that lends itself towards some blur. Um, I think it's definitely a composition style of leading the eye and a focus on, um, you know, a lot of people, but people walking towards something away for some, from something or doing some type of activity. Lots of buildings that have a lot of fun texture and design. Lots of leading lines and uses of shadows and whites are very consistent in his images. You can see again. So I thought I would pull a couple images together and we would, um, I would work on editing them. Um, and again, I think you could apply these techniques as heavy as you like or as you know soft as you like. Some of these are definitely, it almost looks like a charcoal and you can see kind of how heavy that is right here on the um, buildings and the paint technique being applied. Also being applied very selectively. So you can see here the clock doesn't have much on it. The buildings, it's very um, painted looking versus being across the entire image. All right, he has several collections, some that are very abstract. So today we're gonna focus on this more impressionistic look and try to emulate and imitate his style. I'm here in Lightroom first, and what I wanna do is really work on converting the image to black and white because I didn't shoot it that way. And I want to work on getting my highlights, blacks, and the color tones um, in alignment with um, Frank Andre's work. So if you look at his images in this collection, they are a consistent tone and they are have very bright whites but not like you know harsh blown out and then they've got some very specific blacks um, so you'll notice that in all his work what you'll also notice is the grays are not like dingy gray they're very specific but there's also almost a blue um color tone or some type of cool color tone to these. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So the reason I figured this out is I converted my image to black and white, but I noticed as I was scrolling back and forth that my image was very gray tone versus his images. So let's go in and first thing I'm going to do is just do a black and white conversion. Now, this image had a lot of green in it. So you can see my tones are definitely much more green. So what I'm gonna do is go to the color profile and I wanna browse all profiles. Now, there are some black and white that come with um, Lightroom and there's some that are gonna give you different shades of black, gray, and white. So I just wanna look at those in comparison because that's gonna help set us up for success. Um, it's at least going to give us a better starting point. So you can see that one's really gray. I'm looking for more of the um, kind of darker, darker blacks, the brighter whites. You can also increase the amount. So you can see that's giving us those brighter and the darker, but I think it's blowing. It's not necessarily blowing out because you can see how bright his whites are. Now for me, this is a very different style of editing. So um, I think this is a good comparison of how, how bright it is and how he's using the light and the dark to highlight what he wants, which is the trees, the path, the person, the dogs. So I think that's something that um, I need to feel comfortable with when editing this work. So if we look at the, um, original versus this possible profile, I think we are getting a little bit closer. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. Now there's also some in the modern section. Let me just double check before we go. And I don't think that black and white works. So let's go back to where we were with, this is black and white number four and I've increased it a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna go back, and so we've got that color profile set, but we can see 
our whites still aren't white enough. So what I'm going to do is we can increase our whites. Increase those a little bit. I prefer to probably use the tone curve. There we go. That's getting those a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and darken the shadows and the blacks. Now this is very unnatural for me and it may be for you as well, but it's something fun to kind of give a try. So I think that's a little bit closer. Now I'm going to play around with the temperature of the image. So if I bring it on the cooler, I think I need to actually use bring it to the yellow side to get it a little bit crisper white. I'm also going to continue to raise my whites up. Yeah, and then I'm going to go ahead and darken my blacks. Now we could use our brush as well. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab a mask and I am going to grab a brush and let's make it large. I'm just going to brush in this general area. And then I'm going to just increase those whites. I want it to be, yeah, super white. This was a shadow, but I'm still going to kind of just go over that. Now, I also want this bench. So I'm going to come in and just... Um, Pop the bench. The light's already white. I'm going to also pop that light and make it super white. Come over to these corners. All right, so I think we're getting we're getting a lot closer. Now I'm going to do another mask. Let's do objects and I'm going to select my person here. And I'm actually going to darken the person. So let's do some exposure. Yeah, I want to I want to make that a little bit darker. So she really pops, which is what you will see when you really look at Andre's work. The people that he wants to. He's got the child really light, but he's got the adults very very dark. You can see his selective use of whites and darks as you go through um, his imagery. So um, I think this image is very similar to, to mine. Um, so the first step with editing any image in his style is get your blacks, whites, and your color tone correct. Because if we go, um, if we go all the way back to the beginning, of course it was color, but we know when we switched it, it had that kind of green tone. So we just have to be mindful of that. Let me give you another example. So this is another image that I considered editing in his manner. And again, if we go to just, um, let's just go to black and white, look at the tones. It's got, it's got a lot of green. Now I could come down to the mixer and I could reduce the greens. I could reduce the yellows. Um, you can see what that's doing to the image, um, but I think it would be better to actually go up to um, the Browse All Profiles. Let's go to black and white and let's try some different ones. I'm going to start with that number four. I don't like it as much. Um, this one could work nice. This one's a little bit harder image to do maybe choose number three. I'm going to go back and now I'm just going to really darken those blacks quite a bit. Our whites are already pretty white but we can pop those a little bit more and then it's the color tone. So what I'm going to do again is get rid of those golden tones and I'm going to bring it over. So that's much much closer to that crisp white, crisp black without a cast of blue or green or yellow. Also, if I, um, I can alter the tint. So that's a little bit of some tips on getting the base of your image really bright, really dark and consistent. 
Okay, so what I would do for the next step is I would be taking this into Photoshop. And there we want to add our impressionistic techniques, our textures, the blur, and continue to edit the image. So that will be our second step. Join me over in Photoshop. So I have played with quite a few of these images before I created the video. And so I wanna just share with you some of my tips. Um, so the first thing that I would do is I'm gonna duplicate my background layer because I like to have a copy of it just there. You don't have to have it turned on, it's up to you. But I like to have that in case I need it for any reason. Um, so the next thing that I wanna do is go ahead and add some blur to give it a more impressionistic look. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, Blur, and I'm gonna do a Gaussian Blur. And for that, I'm gonna start at about 24, 24 and a half. I'm gonna click OK. And then I am going to just reduce the opacity. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's change the blend mode. keep on our bottom layer. Maybe that is the issue. I have not had that happen before. Okay, let's keep it on normal. You can see multiply. Now that's giving us the very, very dark. It's also giving us that um, blending. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity, maybe about, yeah, 75%. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer. You can see how what that's doing. But what I want to do is change the blend mode. And I'm going to look at maybe soft light. There's lighten, which is going to give us those brighter whites. Darken. And maybe just, um, there's dissolve and normal. Let's just stick with normal. And I'm going to reduce the opacity. So we're getting a little bit more of, um, this has more almost um, that chalk blur, but this is getting kind of getting us started. So what I'm gonna do now is a stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E, and I wanna try a different blur. So I'm gonna do a motion blur, and I'm gonna do it um, upright, yeah, which will make my person stretched a little bit. And I've only got it at about 54. I'm gonna click OK. And I just wanna show you how, let me turn that off. There's my person and there she is now. So it's definitely giving us that blur. And I'm gonna bring down the opacity just till I feel comfortable with it. Maybe about 70%. Um, could come down. I think about 70 is going to do it. So let's again turn it off and on. It's just giving that additional blur. Now I don't want it on my bench, so I'm going to add a mask and I've got a brush and it's on black and I'm just going to come in and move that off the bench. I'm going to move it off the lights. I really don't want those blurred very much. And I, I think I want some of the detail in the trees to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask over these. And my brush is about 77%. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and copy this mask with the Option key. I'm gonna drag it below because I wanna keep on all the layers that we blurred. Yeah, I wanna keep this tree detail and I wanna keep the detail in the lights. All right, so now I've got, um, what we've done is a couple things. Back in Lightroom, we did our whites, blacks, we got our color tone really um, modified. It doesn't have the yellow, the greens, and um, not any of the blues. Then what we've done is we brought it into Photoshop, and so far we've done Gaussian Blur to kind of give it that blur look. We've masked it off where we want our detail. So we've masked it to bring out a little bit of detail in the trees, the lights, and this bench. Um, so those are kind of more of our focal points. Now, I could also take it off of here if I want to really draw the eye. So let's think about that. Let me go up to this mask. And I'm just going to bring back a little bit of that. And I'm just going to go to these other layers and 
do the same thing. Because again, part of his technique is drawing your eye down into the image. So yeah, let's bring back just a little bit, a little bit of that as we go. Now, also our person probably should be a little bit darker because she is important to the story. So I'll have to work on that. Um, I'm just gonna keep that in mind. Now, the next step is to add the texture. And you can see if we looked at, you can see the details of the texture. Now, I have tried two different methods for this and I'll show you both of them. I wish I knew which brush he used, but I'm certain that either there is a texture overlay that he's applying on the image and applying it where he wants it, or he's using a brush. So I'm gonna show you both techniques. So let's go ahead and start with a clean layer. So I'm gonna do Command Option Shift and the letter E for another stamped layer. At this point now, I'm going to go open up my brush panel. And I wanted to start with finding some different brushes that would give me kind of that, um, that texture. So let me get rid of my search. And um, there are free brushes that you can get on Photoshop. I will put the um, description to those, the link to those in the description of the video. Um, now I also have some Texture Lab um, brushes. Let me go to brush. And um, what you can do is you can just try them out. So um, I don't know why that keeps going off the brushes. Yeah, my um, Photoshop is giving me a hard time. So let me get out of the special effects and I'm going to come down to the um, watercolor brushes. And what I want to do, this is a massive random, yeah. So this is one that kind of does these random, you know, splotches. Now that is very soft. In some of his images, it looks like on the buildings, he's applied something really soft like that. But on these pathways, it definitely looks like more just kind of, um, a texture's been applied, something that has, makes this look a little bit rougher, almost kind of like um, a gravel. So I've been looking for something that would do that. I think I need to go find a texture. Now this one isn't bad, so that is another one of the watercolor ones, but I am going to go down and keep looking. This is the salt one. And this one, that that's really soft as well. All right, and then I wanted to go down. There's splatter brushes, and then there's these impressionistic brushes. So let's go there. And there's a blend one. And I wanna make sure my paint, for some reason it switched. I want it on black. getting the smudge brush again. So that must be a smudge brush. We don't want to use that. Let's go back down to the concept brushes. So under concept, there are several different options. That one is leaves granite gloss. So that was one that I had considered. So this one I definitely liked. You can see how that does. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just applying it really quick to see if I like it. Then I'm going to come in and reduce the opacity pretty significantly. So while it's not identical, it definitely, um, you know, it's getting there. Now, one thing is his is not consistently applied. So I think what we would have to do is use our opacity of our paint to apply it heavier where, where we want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the opacity all the way up and I'm gonna go back to, um, let me go back to where we added the layer mask. Okay, 
Now I'm going to come in. I've got the opacity at 26%, and I'm going to just apply that through here. And I'm just doing it kind of random, and then I'm going to lower it. Now, um, I'm kind of making this then a little more gray. And if we look at the image that I was using for inspiration, it's very white. So I'm going to go back. This is where you have to kind of learn as you go. And I'm going to flip it to white and apply that. And what we're going to have to do then is probably put our opacity all the way up and our opacity of our brush because we want to see this texture. And it's going to be a little bit harder to see because it is white. But it is there and we can see it heavier on these ends. Now I'm going to do it in these grass areas because look how similar that looks just going to pop it in around here. So just kind of popping it around these edges. All right, and again then, I'm going to lower the opacity down. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And then I could mask it, could use the mask to remove it anywhere where, you know, I kind of don't want it. I think I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. And I like this one, so I'm going to go ahead and apply some in the trees. And now if you wanted to, um, you could do another stamped layer, um, especially if, let's do Command Shift Option Leather E, and the opacity is at 100%. I'm going to go ahead and take my brush down to about 50%, and I'm going to start applying some of this. And I want to switch to black, and I'm going to just start popping this in the trees for some extra texture. And you can barely, barely see it. It's truly just an accent that's kind of making this more impressionistic and bringing out. I'm going to streak a little bit, a little bit back there, a little bit over there. All right. So that's using brushes. You would want to find and try some different brushes to see kind of what you like. Um, and remember, it's just, it's subtle. Um, so I'm just kind of applying this subtly where I might want it. And then I can change that opacity to really blend it. And you can apply it, you know, go over it multiple times as you use the brushes. So this was the Kyle's Concept Brush. And it is number 503. So if you wanted to try that one. Um, there are other ones that you could try depending on the look that you're going for, but I do like that one. Now, the next thing that I would do, and let's see, I think I went over. Let me add a mask, and I'm going to grab the brush and clean, clean that up. Okay, the other thing that I would do is use textures. So I went out to my texture file, and I found this one. Now, for this image, I would really like this to... Um, be a little bit whiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, let's do a, um, I'm trying to think what I want to do. Uh, let's try a hue saturation. I'm actually going to, yeah, brighten it all the way up. Reduce the saturation. I want it to be white. I definitely don't want it to be, um, pink, but I want all the texture. So yeah, that's not doing much to it, but yeah, I want it to be lighter. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is grab the move tool and I'm going to move this, not that way. I'm going to, I'm going to drag it. Um, well, it wants me to do that. Let me um, flatten the image layer, flatten image, and now I'm going to drag it over top of this image that we've been working on. Now I'm going to get these error messages because that image for some reason is a um, small file, but for the sake of this video, it will work. Okay, so we're going to drag this layer on top. Now this is another way that you could add the texture to your image. Once you're finished, bring down your blend mode. We want to bring it down pretty low. 
And then what I would do is add my mask and I'm actually going to command I invert the mask. I don't think it inverted, command I, there we go. Now we can grab our white brush and I'm gonna make sure that I'm on a soft brush. So let me go search, I'm gonna do soft and pull back up my soft round brush, get rid of that. And what I wanna do is I wanna apply this in a specific area on normal. So there's that texture. Let me zoom in so you can see it. It's very subtle, just like the texture applied in parts of these images. See how soft that is? So I'm just gonna come over and apply it. And then if there's somewhere where I want it darker, just go over it you know, multiple times. So I'm just gonna apply that. I'm also gonna maybe pop some in the trees, just a little bit in different on the mosses. And if you do it too much somewhere, just flip it to black and bring it, bring it back. And I don't want it on my lady because I still need to darken her a little bit more. And I don't necessarily want it on my bench. So I'm gonna clear that off. Now I can change the opacity. So if I wanna bring it up a little bit, I could. Now if you were adding a texture to a space that was dark, then you could just make your, um, your texture file dark. So you could alter the color in your texture file any way you want. I also don't really like all this texture right here. So let me take some of that off. Yeah. Now what I could do is really small, apply it just to the moss. And that could be really fun. Um, just kind of streaking those, which is which is something that he did. So I'm gonna take my opacity and my brush down. And if you remember on some of his images, he kind of has where the lights are and where things are, where light should be, he's kind of streaked it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that for some additional kind of mystery and look in this scene, kind of streaking those like it's got movement. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out and see what else I want to do. I'm gonna go back to kind of my inspiration image and we can see um, his whites are still a little brighter than mine at this point. Um, the blacks look pretty good. I do need to darken my subject. So let's go ahead and add a transparent layer. And for ease of use, I am just going to use the burn tool and I'm gonna come over and let's take the, um, let's make sure we go up to shadows. And I'm gonna try to just darken her. Uh, let's take the exposure all the way up. The other would be, I could come down and do a curves and I'm gonna really, really darken. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is just invert this, grab my brush and I'm gonna brush on her, just darkening parts of her a little bit there. I think that stands out a lot more. Um, I may reduce the opacity, just wanted a little bit a little bit less um, evident there. And then as a final touch, I could also go back to, um, I could either do a um, brightness contrast. We could try that. Let's try brightening just a little bit, maybe a little bit of contrast. little bit more brightness to get those whites just really bright. You could also do a curves. So you've kind of got a couple options there, but you just want to make sure you've got that final um, kind of bright look where you want it. I probably would maybe even brighten some of this area. Um, so that is a little bit of the technique. I have not mastered it by any stretch of the imagination. I still don't think that um, I've got the exact like movement and shadowing. I'm gonna have to keep working on it, but I think to get started, 
What I would recommend is, of course, the Lightroom techniques that we did first to really get your colors and your tones right. And then in Photoshop, you can play with the blur, the Gaussian, the motion blur. You could also then um, play with the brushes, play with adding texture, and just continuing to make sure your whites and your shadows are correct um, and go from there. If you have an image that has more people, I probably would do even more um, motion blur. So if we go up to filter, blur, motion blur, and we do it kind of up, even as a final on here, you can see how that's giving us that definitely more um, artistic. And then I would just add a mask and remove it where we don't want that blur. So I would remove it from the lamp post, the bench, this light post coming down. And let's make sure our opacity is all the way up on our brush. Yeah, I want to remove that blur. There we go. And I don't mind it on her, but I also want to remove some on this tree, and this part of the tree to really tell the story. And then maybe bring the opacity down just a touch. So I think I would continue to play with the motion blur, which is going to give you that much more impressionistic look. So I hope this was helpful. I so appreciate the subscriber reaching out and challenging me to give this a try. And I hope that you will check out uh, Frank Andre's work. I think it's stunning and just have fun playing with it. Um, please send any comments. I'd love to see your images if you try this. And if you have other ideas for videos that you'd like for me to showcase, I'd be glad to do it. Thanks so much.